So you might have heard that with EVs, it's generally recommended not to charge the car to a hundred percent. Well, with this car, things are a bit different. Let me explain. Now, they do something very different here in the Honda ENY1. Look once and you might see a Honda HRV. Look again and look closely because this is the all new, all electric Honda ENY1, which is their second fully electric vehicle after the probably already a classic, right? Honda E. So it's definitely a lot bigger than the Honda E. In fact, this car is in the very popular SUV segment. I'm Luke. Welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. Now this is the all new EN architecture platform, the F model for front wheel drive. Now this is the first model from Honda being released on this platform, but it won't be the last. We're gonna see a number of models on this fully electric platform. Now this platform is built on three basic principles, a high rigidity body, a low center of gravity, of course, being achieved by that battery pack we just found under the passenger compartment and some very, interesting and improved aero on the underside of the vehicle, the part we don't see, but that makes a world of a difference for the efficiency, which I will be testing here in the real world in my driving video. So make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you know the second that video goes live. Now we have a three-in-one design for the electric motor. In fact, the electric motor houses not only the electric motor, but the power drive unit and also the transmission. No gearbox, of course, because this is a full electric car requiring just one gear speed. Now, that unit together weighs just 77 kilos, which compared, say, to a petrol engine of this size would be over 200 kilos. Despite the small package and the small size, it does deliver more than enough power. In fact, the sprint from zero to 100 kilometers per hour is achieved in just 7.6 seconds. You've got 310 newton meters of torque and a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour. So regen, regen is the car's ability to recharge the battery as the car is decelerating. Now, they do something very different here in the Honda ENY1. So regen, the three modes, are controlled from the paddle shifter, which I do like behind the steering wheel. However, the mode, it's definitely not a one pedal driving mode because the car does not come to a complete stop even in the highest regen setting. And the regen is programmed in a way where it turns on once you press the pedals, but eventually it sort of turns itself off. So this is an interesting approach. And again, it's the first time I'm ever seeing this on the channel. So this will be interesting to try out in the driving video, how I feel and how that actually does in the real world. So make sure you're subscribed and check the links below for the upcoming driving video. So let's talk about charging. I know there's a lot of numbers that confuse people over here. So let's break it down as simply as possible. Firstly, the charge port of this car located in the front of the vehicle. What, in my opinion, is one of the better hidden charge ports from all the cars we've seen. You push a button and essentially what looks like the front grill, like right, pops open and there are your two different charging ports, AC and DC. Now we're not gonna using, be using DC a lot here in Malta because we do not have highway situations. DC rapid charging is primarily used when you want and need to charge the car as fast as possible. But I'll talk about that in a second. AC charging is what we're going to be using primarily. So AC charging can charge at a number of different speeds. And it's nice to see that this car comes by default with an 11 kilowatt three phase charger, which means at a best case scenario on a three phase supply, this car can charge in just 6.5 hours to full essentially. Now, even if you don't have three phase, which I know is the case for most households here in Malta, if you charge this car on the public network, which is three phase, you are going to take advantage of the fact that this car comes with that 11 kilowatt onboard charger. But what if I don't have three phase and uh, I have single phase at home? Well, if you have single phase, 
three different charging speeds. The absolute slowest is if you're charging on that normal three pin socket, which I don't recommend, but you can do it. The car will take 32 hours to charge on a normal three pin socket. Now, if you invest in a wall box or a home charger, which I've reviewed before on the channel, so you can go back and check them out, that will charge the car faster because there's a higher amount of power going into it. In fact, you can get a 3.7 kilowatt wall box, which will charge the car now in 20 hours. You can even go even faster at 7.4 kilowatts, which will charge the car now in 10 hours. However, on single phase, as I've said before, this is an unlikely situation, particularly if the meter is being used for the home and charging the car. Having said that, this car does have an interesting feature where you can limit the power from the car itself. So you can get a 7.4 kilowatt uh, charger and then from the car itself, limit how much the car actually pulls from it. So it can say, notice that your house does allow for say five kilowatts worth of car charging you can actually do that with the software in this car. So that's an interesting thing here. And of course, the 11 kilowatt three phase, which I've already spoken about. So let's talk about DC rapid charging. So the principle here is that you can add a hundred kilometers in around 11 minutes. So what does that equate to on a full battery? So the fastest rate here is 78 kilowatts, which is not the fastest in the industry, but What's interesting here is that Honda controlled the charge curve quite industry. In fact, against competitors which have, say, a 100 kilowatt charging rate, there is barely any difference in the charging time because of the way they control the charge curve of the car. You will see a difference to cars which charge at, say, 140, 150 kilowatts plus, then yes, the charging times will be less versus this car. However, again, against the 100 kilowatt charging times, no difference whatsoever. Interesting point, in Malta, our fastest DC rapid chargers are of 50 kilowatts, which means on those chargers, the fastest available at the moment, it will take 68 minutes to charge this car, so just over an hour. So you might have heard that with EVs, it's generally recommended not to charge the car to a 100%. Well, with this car, things are a bit different. Let me explain. So this has a 68.8 kilowatt hour battery pack, of which 61.9 kilowatts are actually usable, which means we already have a 10% buffer on the battery capacity. So even if on your dashboard it's marking a 100% state of charge, the battery pack itself is only being charged to 90%. That buffer does improve the longevity or how long this battery pack is going to last. So nice to see that there's a sizable buffer here being put um, by default into the vehicle. A bit more about that battery, this is NCM, nickel cobalt manganese. It is being liquid cooled to ensure it keeps the ideal battery temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. 400 volt architecture and those battery cells, I haven't found it documented, but historically LG Chem have supplied battery cells to Honda. They have, however, recently announced that as of 2024, they've signed a deal with CATL, who's going to be supplying their cars starting in China and then rolling those out globally. So we are seeing a change of battery supplier coming up. So let's talk about the all important range of the vehicle or how far you can drive before needing to recharge. Well, this car has an official WLTP rating of 412 kilometers, which let me tell you, for most people here in Malta is good enough for two whole weeks of commute. For our English viewers, the 412 converts to 256 miles. Now, EV database, a popular online electric vehicle database claim that this car actually achieves just 335 kilometers in the real world. Well, we'll be putting all of this to the test, especially in the Maltese conditions, which yes, are ideal for electric vehicles because of our low speeds, ideal temperatures, and so many other factors which I've mentioned in the past on the channel. So what is the real world range? Well, we'll be putting that to the test in the driving video. So make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell because that video is coming up very soon. 
So this is only the second electric car from Honda, but let's be honest, they have years of experience with their hybrid models. So they may have been a bit late to the party, but this platform is going to ensure they can roll out a number of electric cars going forward. I'd like to thank Honda, Mota and Gazanza Meet for helping out with today's review. Maverick for helping out with the technical today. And of course, you, the viewer, for tuning in. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. And make sure you're tuning in for that driving video. By the way, if you want to help support the channel a bit more, two things you can do. One, the official merch is now available. Link in the description to the online store. Where you can get your own hoodie, your own t-shirt, and more products coming soon as well. If you want to go a step further, you can also join as a YouTube member. This is a monthly, a very small monthly fee per month, which is going to give you access to a number of perks, including the ability to watch videos before everyone else gets to see them. So if you want to help support what we're doing here at The Future is Electric, and if you believe that The Future is Electric, make sure you help support us so we can keep this going as long as possible. But as always, I hope me, and the Honda ENY1 have convinced you that the future is electric.